have 12 different periods. Think of these like hanging files in a filing system. You got 12 hanging files, and in each one, certain information belongs in there. And I color coded them. I color coded them because that's a mnemonic device, a memory device, to help me mem remember it. Okay? And um, that's very, very important. We learn by associating one thing with another. New information comes in, we immediately associate. So I started associating colors with events in the period to help you remember, and that's what your, your bookmark is. So in a longer series, we of course go into a lot much more detail, but we've got 12 periods. That still doesn't help me reading through the Bible. The next thing we have to do is we have to take the 73 books and figure out how do I read these 73 books in such a way that it makes sense as a story and keeps me captive in the story. And the answer to that is this. Not all books in the Bible are narrative. In other words, not all books in the Bible keep the story moving. There are books that belong in one spot, and they, they give you a broader look at what's happening during that period, but it's not a narrative historical book. So what I, identified, what I did is identified 14 books that are narrative. And you can see over here on the timeline chart on the far left, you've got 12 periods. Then over here you'll see narrative books. If you look at the narrative books, we have 14 of them. We have Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah, 1st Maccabees, Luke, and Acts. Those are the 14 books that we chose. We could have chosen another gospel, but we chose Luke because Luke and Acts were originally one. And it's the same author. But if you read those 14 books, which are not in complete order, you'll get the story, basically you'll basically get the narrative of salvation history. And notice what we do. We go from Genesis to Exodus. We skip Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to it. It's got its place, but it, it, it's not right now at the beginning of trying to understand this thing. And we skip Deuteronomy. We have Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. We move on. And so those 14 books are really, really important. Today, we'll basically go through those 14 books really fast, together. Now, the other 59 books fit in the context of those 14. So, for example, if you're over here in, in 2 Samuel, versus 2 Samuel, and you're, you're, you're reading about David, it's important to know that the Psalms fit in here. That's where they fit in. Now, your chart shows you where all of these books fit in. And also, in the back of your workbook, we have a really nice chart back there that will, uh, will assist you. And that chart is on page 39. 39, we have, we have the 12 periods, we have the 14 books, and we show you where all the other books fit in, right at that point. So we're giving you a lot of information to show you where books fit in their proper place so that you can read them. By the time we're done today, you'll have a much better idea of what I'm talking about. If it doesn't seem natural at this point, it will by the end of the day. So the key to the, to the system, the great adventure, is make the complex simple. Make it simple. Twelve periods, fourteen books to read through the Bible. Then I know where all the other 59 fit in to those twelve periods and fourteen books. Now let's look at the timeline here before we move into our first period, shall we? We have in the Bible timeline, we've got really everything that we're going to need right now. We've got the names of the periods, color. We've got the narrative books. On top of the narrative books are the 59 supplemental books. Job, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Ruth, they're all of them listed. And they're more fully listed in that, that last page that I showed you in the manual. You also have a, a category here on the Bible timeline chart called God's Family Plan. And God's family plan is followed by a number of symbols that represent covenants. God's family plan grows bigger and bigger through covenants. We'll go through that later too. But the major part of the timeline chart that I want to show you is this middle part here. This middle part here is kind of the dots to it. And it's divided into three sections. White, <coughs> gray, white. The gray area in the middle represents the land of Canaan the land of Canaan, modern-day Israel. It's 50 miles wide and 150 miles long. 
95% of the biblical drama takes place on this stage called Canaan for modern day Israel. I take trips to Israel every January. We have information on our tables. We've got a place for two trips in January. We're taking people. We do the Bible timeline on location. If you want to go with us, just talk to me afterwards. We also have a trip in May with Focus with Curtis Martin. The two of us are leading Focus missionaries over to Israel with benefactors. And this is the major part of the, of the story. The white on top represents the countries north of Israel. That's Mesopotamia, Syria, Syria, and Greece and Rome and so forth. Down below, the white represents the south of Egypt. So what we did, what I did, is, is I wanted to show the movement of the story, starting in Mesopotamia, up in modern-day Iraq, in the Garden of Eden, and then through Abraham, moving down into the Promised Land. When they went down into Egypt, we go into Egypt. Later on, when we go up into Babylon, we go up into Babylon back down, trying to show the movement of the story. So you have in this middle section a number of people, Adam, Eve, Seth, Cain and Abel, Noah, Shem, and so forth. We also have numbered, numbered uh, items, which are events that took place. So you've got people and you've got events. People and events, very, very important. And then at the bottom here, we have the world power. Egypt, 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 <laughs> Syria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. Okay? And then beneath that, we have the secular history. All the things that are happening in the world during the time of these events in salvation history. And then at the very bottom, the timeline, the numbers, 2016, 2015, 14, 13, and so forth. So in this one chart, you've got the whole thing laid out. You have a very nice copy of a very primitive beginning that I had at 25 years old, laying it all out. I got so excited at the University of Minnesota, sitting in front of my Hebrew class, I thought, I gotta see this. I gotta see the story. I see it in my head, I see the chart, I see Israel, I see the north, I see the south, I gotta figure out which books go where. I got so excited, I didn't go to Hebrew that day. I went to a, a, a craft store, and I got markers and beads, I, I, I imagined the bracelet, and I went to the meat market and got a big white piece of paper. I went home and stayed up for two days solid drawing out this whole scheme. And I was so thrilled that I could see it. And then I started to realize that other people are thrilled too. So that's the, that's the Bible timeline chart. This is a great way to approach the scriptures and to try to get your, your mind around it as a story. Not just a story, but your story. This is your story.